Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm here to continue with the lectures. Chi, thanks for doing the tutorial for today. So as promised, we uh, swapped the lectures and today we're going to talk about graph theory and social networks and the lecture seven. Um, this lecture is uh, very much about the graph theory, about the basic definition and how does this implies and applies to social network, the phenomenon of social networks, analysis, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, And let's start now. So we'll be talking about different networks, a graph, path, small worlds, strands of weak ties, and uh, such phenomena as homophily. Then we will summarize in the end. There is a link here. You can uh, go uh, and download this uh, article and book. So the particular uh, relevant chapters will be two, three, and four for the book. You can get chapters online. Uh, so also there's a reference uh, on the Cornell uh, University, so you can uh, see uh, this network's book inside here. I put the screenshot inside. So uh, networks are everywhere, and uh, you know modern society is connected in various ways through social networks, through uh, internet, which is large networks, through of course social relationships, through the phone, from many many ways multimodal connections, uh, many to many connections. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the truth about our modern life that facilitates the global communication through the internet, through the financial systems where we wire money with one to another, through the news and media where the network uh, delivered is one to many and through the social networks, of course. So uh, therefore we have uh, the field called network science and uh, basically the study of this phenomenon takes place what are the actual things are happening within a complex social economic and te technological systems uh, if you want to follow some researchers on uh, network analysis then you could also follow a researcher his name is uh, uh, sandro fortunado and he is uh, used to be working in finland i guess he's still in a finnish university in helsinki so uh we'll, let's talk about social networks first and um uh, social structure, uh, social networks can be described in terms of a uh, graph where we have vertices, individuals, and uh, these vertices are related to each other in an implicit way. And uh, this is the edges, the relationships. So, therefore, we can get adjacency matrix and a list of this network. So, a couple of examples of a network can be like this one is a karate club. We will be talking about this club a little bit later, but uh, well, probably also this club have like a um, cluster, right? So it's like two disjoint networks as well, or friendship. And uh, uh, this, uh, this club uh, have been split into two separate uh, clubs in the end. And uh, basically the question is, okay, based on this information and network uh, mm -hmm. structure, can we actually predict where there's a network to be split, let's say into two networks in the future, by looking at a structure, by using some algorithm analytical methods to figure that out. Uh, of course, we have larger networks, we have Hewlett Packet networks, uh, uh, where this uh, was a superimposed company hierarchy for 436 employees. So you can see that the network in HP was uh, very much uh, hierarchical. So you can see how it was organized. Uh, uh, and uh, this kind of network also can be seen from, let's say, subversion in your software development products. So uh, uh, many ways uh, and uh, quite interesting uh, things can be mined from the network science. Uh, so this is a network of loans among financial institutions. So you can see which institutions are powerful. Yeah, for example, you can see uh, which loans get delivered to others and which are not powerful. So of course, more loans get uh, delivered. Those basically define trust and power in the particular um, in the particular case and uh, this is another network is our ARPANET which was the grand uh, granddad of the internet right so it's how it was organized so uh, what is interesting is see that it has certain nodes and uh, nodes are linked to each other in a way that uh, there is a redundant connection so always exists so if some connection will be broken there always will be another connection to reach uh, that node and that uh, basically guarantees the uh, guarantees the, um, the stability of a net of, of, of how that work works. So it's everybody can be always uh, 
uh, reached. So that's why you can see that SSRI and uh, UCLA are connected actually in three ways, right, for example. So uh, this is also shows uh, basically the importance of different nodes. The number of connections basically uh, talks a lot about uh, which node is important and why. Uh, so uh, we can uh, notice the cycles and you can notice that every node belongs to a cycle. So let's talk about graph paths and small worlds. So pretty much a basic definitions of the network science. A network mathematically represented by a graph where we have V uh, vertices and E edges and the set of vertices nodes, V, and set of edges uh, between them. Uh, graph can be directed or undirected. You know this from your discrete maths lectures and the same applies to the uh, let's say social networks where we have direct and direct polling, etc. The pass in the graph is a sequence of distinct nodes such that for each node in this pass there is an edge between V and VI plus one, so to the neighbor to the next node. And uh, this is a pass, this is an example of a pass. So graph is connected if there is a pass between them, right? So uh, pretty much uh, with, uh, with, uh, with every every node inside inside this graph, right? So you can see that for example, B A and C D are not connected, right? So three is connected graph in total, and each of them within the graph is considered to be connected. Between uh, distance between two nodes V and V is the length of the shortest path between them. So you can find uh, that the distance is uh, three because there are three edges from G to reach L. So uh, and uh, you can have a um, the algorithm to. Uh, uh, search neighbors. Uh, it's called so-called so breast, uh, breast first search. So given the graph like uh, this one, you can enumerate distances uh, and node by performing breast first search. So you will be uh, pretty much splitting it down uh, uh, always in, uh, in, uh, in, in this way, right? So you will see uh, nodes of distance one from the top, from the root of the graph, distance two, and also distance three. So everything further than that. Uh, you can propose a simple recursive algorithm uh, to solve this. And for those who are applying or getting uh, programmer jobs, I guess this is one of the key basic questions your interviewers will be asking you. So uh, take a look and take time at home to really know how breast first and also depth first uh, search works. Uh, we have a graph like above, and we also can define the metric called clustering coefficient which is a fraction of connections that are released between the neighbors of the node C. So a K1, KI is the number of neighbors of the node I, and then NI is the number of edges among KI. So we have get all neighbors, for example, from node B we get neighbors A, C, D, and number of edges between them is, uh, is uh, okay, let me count, uh, Basically, it's only one edge, right? So, so this is uh, this is how it can can be defined. That's why we get uh, one third uh, through through for, for this uh, for, for this particular graph. And also, we can get uh, clustering coefficient in the brackets, like overall clustering coefficient for the graph or for a network, and it measures uh, pretty much the number of triangles observed for the nodes versus number of potential triangles of average across all nodes, right? So. This is a useful metric to uh, measure the uh, connectivity of the graph. So in case of this uh, C in brackets, it's uh, much bigger than uh, uh, C for, of, of a random graph, then it's called a small world. Yeah, so if this uh, big number metric is much bigger than uh, uh, the clustering coefficient uh, of n of a random graph, pretty much, pretty much randomly, uh, randomly distributed, then it's called a small world. Uh, so we can also define something called average shortest path. So given a pair of nodes, we can measure the shortest path across all paths between the pair in the network, right? So we can uh, measure the shortest path and we can measure the shortest path among all paths. And uh, take uh, if you take the average across all pairs of nodes, uh, then you'll get the average shortest path, right? So it will be the average shortest path. Uh, shortest path is small when uh, connectivity is high, and uh, there are many algorithms. For example, Dijkstra, you have heard about it again in your discrete maths course, that uh, can uh, calculate the path, right? So then you can calculate all paths, and then you can get the average shortest path. Uh, and this is one of the most common equations in the graphs, and measuring paths for all pairs of nodes are computationally quite expensive. Imagine you have to run uh, Dijkstra algorithms for uh, 
the square of uh, the size of the network, right? So you take all possible uh, pairs and then you have to write the extra algorithm for that. So uh, there is a small world phenomenon. So if you look at a large social network with a thousand of nodes, we find the distances are generally quite short, often less than 10, right? So mm -hmm. this is called small world phenomenon. And uh, uh, this small world can also be defined through the clustering coefficients we had just a few uh, slides before. So, uh, in fact, there is uh, such a rule called the sixth degree of separation that has been shown to be applicable to uh, many real world networks. So, uh, for example, we can mention a study by Milham and others in the 1960s that uh, was a small world experiment. They asked uh, about 300 people to, uh, in Nebraska and one of the states in, U in the USA to send uh, uh, mail to Kansas mm -hmm. based on uh, the uh, first name of uh, the recipient, right? So, for example, if uh, one guy is a Bob, another one is Smith, and uh, uh, if Bob in Nebraska want to send uh, uh, mail to Smith in Kansas, then um, it just uh, give it to some random Smith of his friends rather than to particular Smith in particular place, right? And then uh, by doing this, uh, out of this uh, roughly 300 mail, 64 actually reached the real target, right? So, and you can see that uh, number of average interactions was um, was six. Funny thing is that there were even were uh, those uh, people who that that uh, directly passed to the to the actual uh, mail address. So there was about uh, two two emails like that. They also were uh, two, uh, the three emails that pass on two people and then reach the address. So uh, this is where the number six comes first time. But if you look in a large social network of today, you can also find that uh, Yuri Leskovets uh, and Horowitz in Microsoft Instant Messenger, they actually have studied this and then they analyzed 240 million active user accounts for, for a month, right? And they were. Uh, basically trying to figure out uh, whether these people were uh, connected and who communicated with who. So and the number was precarious. So it's estimated average distance between connectors was 6.6 .6 and the median distance was about seven, right? So it's again, a number 6.6 .6 and seven count again. So it's also called the rule of six handshakes. So uh, the key finding was the distances within the giant component were very, very small on average. and. Uh, in fact, the distance of this socially scaled in a huge number, right? So if you decide that everybody has, let's say, 600 friends in a social network and these friends are uh, not uh, overlapped, over about, very, overlapped very little between each other, then you can see that uh, the fifth connection will be uh, approximately 10 billion people, right? So that pretty much uh, uh, covers, uh, covers uh, the Earth, right? So it also mathematically makes sense. And we have actually more than 100 friends using the social network, so it kind of really makes sense, about six uh, short steps or six hand calls, et cetera. So uh, how useful uh, the parts in reality to people in society, right? So uh, in the case of six short steps or six words apart, in fact, social networks uh, tend to be uh, uh, having a lot of very short paths uh, between essentially uh, different uh, random types of people mm -hmm. and uh, of course the, the, the key here is how to uh, uh, we can leverage on this for different applications right so how we can make sure that this phenomena actually used by us by social network algorithms to uh, do a better job than whatever application we would imagine uh, there are some other uh, uh, measures such as network uh, diameter and uh, it's measured in, so in, the, in the following way. Uh, for all pairs of the nodes, you need to take a shortest path, and then given a set of all shortest paths, get the maximum value in the set, right? So basically find uh, the maximum uh, shortest path. This is, would be uh, the uh, met, uh, network diameter. Uh, combination cost of this, of this, of course, also high, right? Because you have to find this shortest path by dextra, for example, and you need to take all pairs again. And in large network, one may, uh, one may need to uh, have uh, like a sample of the network to figure out to see shortest paths. And this example for the Karate network comes in the uh, paper I was discussing. Uh, let's have a three minutes break and then we will continue on strengths of big ties, homophily, and the summary of this lesson.
Okay, let's continue and talk about strong and big ties. So uh, links are different uh, in terms of strands, and you can define this difference. So for example, friends versus acquaintance. So maybe amount of time you spend, affection, trust, etc., etc. You know this in real life, so this is not really a secret for you. So um, Mark uh, Grantower in 1974, as, oh, as a long time ago as this, have interviewed the job seekers who had recently changed employees to learn how they discovered these new jobs. And more often uh, from acquaintances than from close friends, right? So you can see that um, even in job space, uh, people uh, don't find uh, jobs from close friends. They usually find the jobs from somebody they know indirectly. Of course, nowadays, this has also been changed with the internet, with all the resources we have. So maybe the distance can be even further, but close friends usually don't want to hire each other. Usually it's acquaintances uh, getting, uh, get, get hired because there is already some trust, but at the same time, uh, uh, there's no, they don't jeopardize in the friendship relationship in case of this employment will not go too well. Uh, so the hip hypothesis was uh, also uh, was described in, uh, in, uh, in a way of uh, the uh, types of ties. So there's well, local ties, private closure of triads with strong ties. It's local global ties, strong ties cannot be bridges. And also there was another observation that a global observation that bridges more important for information transmission, right? So basically bridges, as you will know later, are those edges between two otherwise uh, um, not very well connected components of the ground. So conclusion was like this, weak ties are more important for information transmission. Uh, weak ties are those really uh, have uh, much more information uh, uh, and knowledge transmitted as compared to like close friends and close ties. Yeah, you can also define this in terms of the entropy in, uh, in, in uh, information, um, information size. So, um, information theory. So, uh, let's discuss the strengths of weak ties. So, triadic closure of ties is a strong ties. A satisfies a strong triadic closure in case E for O, B, and C, for which there is a strong tie A, B, and C. Uh, B, there is also a, a, a strong or weak tie between B and C, right? So, this is a triadic close. Again, we define strong and weak ties. Uh, in our ways, but there is a triadic closure property, and triadic closure can be defined in this way. So uh, this is a, uh, for example, a second uh, side of triadic closure. So in one case, AC has a weak tie, and AB have a strong tie. It's not necessary to have a, a weak tie uh, between a big, weak or strong tie between B and C. But in case A and B and A and C have a strong ties, uh, then B and C consider to have a weak tie. So we can classify uh, all links as strong and weak tie. And if a not has strong ties to two neighbors, then these neighbors must have at least a weak tie between them. This is a triadic closure. If a, if a node has a strong ties to two neighbors, then these neighbors must have at least a weak tie between them. And therefore, you can actually paint your graph in terms of weak and strong ties. Uh, weak are W, strong are S, right? So you can see, for example, JG and JF have a strong ties, and then they might have a strong tie between F and G, and J, K, and J, uh, H uh, might uh, have uh, two weak ties, and then might still have a strong tie between uh, K and H. But for example, uh, J, F, G, F, and uh, G, H have one strong, one weak tie, and therefore it's not necessary that there is a tie between F and H. Uh, but uh, later you also find that uh, A, B is actually the bridge in this network, right? so it's uh, different networks properties. And since we talk about bridge, let's describe bridge. So bridge is a tie that connects two otherwise unconnected components, right? So it's like information within the group is often the same. Information within groups is different. That's why it's so important for us to uh, diversify our networks, right? Go to different groups. And bridge provides the link to different information source, and therefore it's more important in terms of transmission of the information. So uh, this is an example of the bridge, right? The tie between C and D, otherwise these components are not connected. The link between C and D is a bridge if its deletion will cause C and D to lie in two separate components and to have two separate, otherwise disconnected uh, graphs. Tie AB is a local bridge if A and B have no friends in common, right? So a local bridge is a bridge that don't have uh, common friends, but uh, otherwise A and B still can be connected. And here they are connected to the path AF, FG, GH, GHB, right? So 
this is a local bridge, right? Uh, so how to make this bri local bridge a global bridge? We will have to remove uh, J, G, K, so then A, B will be the only connection and then it will be two different components on the left and on the right. So uh, AB is a local bridge of span four. So what is a span? Span is a local bridge and the distance between A and B after the removal of AB itself, right? So A, uh, A, uh, F, F, G, G, A, J, H, B has uh, four uh, nodes, in, uh, four edges inside. And that's why the span is four. So we can claim if a node C satisfies a strong tragic closure. So it means uh, it has, uh, uh, if it has two uh, connected, uh, two strong ties, and then it applies to the big tie, so you can see this in the picture. And it is involved in at least two strong ties. Yeah, so if uh, not C also involved in at least two strong, strong ties, let's say B, C, and A, C, and then any local bridge it is involved is, uh, must be also a big tie, right? So uh, this uh, theorem is basically based on all the definitions we just defined. So uh, this 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 is the, this is a big time that we are discussing about, and uh, mm. proof of this uh, we we don't we don't give a proof in this lecture, but it can be uh, okay. Let me explain properly. It's, it's, mm. it's fine. So if we suppose that C satisfies strong traffic closure and C D is a strong bridge, then there is a triple uh, B C D, which B C and C D is strong, right? But then B D should be uh, link, right? So basically, it's, this is uh, get proof, get given by the contradiction. So this is how it get proved. Uh, uh, weak ties, uh, weak ties, and uh, local bridges. Uh, maybe the second point here will be that the local bridge between a nodes A and B must be a weak tie, and weak social ties are those ones that connect us to new resources, new opportunities, new information, and therefore recommendation of new jobs are often rooted in the contact with distant acquaintances, right? So this is like a mathematical. Uh, explanation of uh, graph theory explanation of what the researchers have found in their uh, study in 1974. So we identify whether an edge can be a local bridge by defining the neighbor overlap between uh, the edges, right? So um, uh, neighbor overlap can be defined as number of nodes who are neighbors of both A and B and divided by number of nodes who are neighbors of at least one of A or B, right? So this is how it works. For example, uh, an overlap between A and F is uh, one six and we define local bridges as edges of neighbor overlap zero, right? So indeed it's like that. If we have uh, if we have a neighbor overlap zero, so we don't have common neighbors, then this is a local uh, bridge. So it boils back to the original definition. Merlo in 2009 at Facebook analyzed the friendship links and uh, they basically figure out three categories of links. And those categories were based on the usage of uh, over one month of the observed period. So there is so-called re re reciprocal mutual links and one way links and also maintain links. So if uh, the last one, if the users follow information about the friend at the end of, uh, the end of the link, whether or not actual communication between them took place. So maybe it didn't take place, but uh, the person that was following, so it's a maintain link. Uh, the last two types are known as the passive links, right? So one way link, one follow another one or even uh, uh, something that didn't have any interaction happening. So uh, on the Facebook, uh, you can see that there's an active network diagram. So X shows the number of friends user de declared and the Y shows the smaller, uh, the, the number of different link types, right? So you can see so the network size and number of people. Uh, so we can see different types of relationships. So maintaining relationships are the biggest uh, One-way communication is uh, grows shorter, and then there's a reciprocal communication, right? So it's like mutual communication. It has a spike in the beginning to grow as everything else, but then uh, with the network size, it grows proportional to network size. It's much slower pace as the rest. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can just uh, recap this observation. So number of friends of user actually communicate with is generally between 10 to 20. So it's number of people who really communicate is 10 to 20. And the power of social media is to enable passive engagement, which occupies interest in middle ground between strong and weak ties between people. So basically, social networks are very good in uh, this kind of passive uh, engagement, right? So we don't need to have direct communication with the person, but we could uh, follow somebody, we can uh, engage with their content, and that is uh, really uh, 
enabled by the power of social mm -hmm. network phenomena. Uh, if allowed only reciprocal links, like basically just uh, direct links, uh, everyone is connected only to a small number of individuals. So like if you look at the messengers without the actual channels where the people is, and this is, uh, this is uh, an example of a network uh, where we uh, have uh, uh, small connected components inside there. So let's talk about homophily. Uh, agents in social network have other characteristics apart from their links, right? Correct. So we also have such uh, like uh, basically the semantics of the nodes, and this can be non-mutable, race, gender, age, or mutable, right? Like place to live, occupation, activities, opinions, beliefs, and uh, links. And mutable characteristics co-evolve over co co uh, co evolve over time. So um, the phenomenon of homophily uh, is pretty much about this. We, uh, when we take a snapshot in time, we observe that those nodes characteristic are co correlated across links. So for example, academics have often academic friends, correct? So uh, students have a student friends, uh, business have a business friend, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this phenomenon that people are linked to similar others is called homophily. And uh, well, it can be also socially described, right? So if we, we have line-minded, Connections. We uh, we have uh, friends uh, depending on which network and which uh, society level maybe we are following or which stage of our life we are at the moment. Even Aristotle said people love those who are like themselves. So the most comfortable price. And you can see this phenomenon in uh, the U.S. high school, where you can see that uh, uh, if you divide these people based on race and divide these people based on age and school attendance, right? So you can see that. Uh, that, uh, for example, if you go for the different race, uh, you can see that uh, same races uh, have been uh, have been uh, tied together. In if you look from left to right, but also you can see that there's different ages uh, that divide uh, and school attendance. Right, basically, is uh, how, how good they are in study. You can see that people get split into also quite uh, obvious segments. So uh, the key mechanisms in that lie uh, under the boot of the homophily is, of course, the selection. So A and B have similar characteristics, and A and B get a link AB, and of course, social influence. So a, a, a social influence, and A and B have a link, and B chooses the same mutable characteristics as A, right? So basically, somebody is uh, I don't know, smoking, then they also follows and also start smoking, and that whole peer pressure, right, especially in schools. So uh, social affiliation network uh, is a network of people uh, and social activities, right? So for example, Perry, Bob, and Anna, uh, they are literacy volunteers, and also Daniel and Anna go to Karate Club. So there's three types of possible closures here. Two people with a friend in common, two people with a focus in common, and a person joining a focus that his friend is already involved in. So try the closure. Look, Bob and Clary have uh, uh, and Bob and Anna have uh, strong ties, and therefore that uh, they they also get a tie between Clary and Anna. So uh, studied uh, when uh, um, Cousins and Watts in 2006 studied email communication about uh, 22,000 undergrad students over a 60-day period, and they studied uh, two snapshots at uh, in the beginning and also after 60 days. For each K, uh, uh, they identify a set of nodes that have exactly K friends in common, right? So, uh, so the key research questions they were asking is how many, much more likely is an H to be formed between two nodes if they already have one or multiple friends in common, right? So, like if we have two friends, uh, one friend in common, how likely we will uh, make the connection? So, given a set of nodes that have exactly K friends in common at uh, in the beginning, we want to estimate fraction of key friends that will form from a link by the end of a uh, second snapshot so after 60 days. And the baseline was uh, this, uh, based on the probabilities, so where P is a probability that one friend will form a link and the probability that they fail to form a link with key friends. And baseline two was uh, basically related uh, to one to uh, a similar probability, but with the K minus one, right? So it's, uh, it's uh, just like two assumptions, how this can be measured. So you can see that uh, uh, based on the trial closure, uh, probability of uh, link formation have drastically increased uh, from, uh, like you see these two baselines are in red and then the 
the third one is in a, in a, in a bold so black color you can see so once they get uh, I guess uh, seven eight nine uh, seven uh, yeah so once they get nine friends in common right and further like uh, more than ten friends in common then the probability that they form a connection within the next um, sixty days drastically start increasing right mm -hmm. and if they have let's say one friend in common or zero friends in common the probability is actually very low so uh, this means that more people we get in common uh more likely we are going to also join in a relationship so this is what you can see from this study and we also have so-called focal closure right karate introduced anna to daniel uh, karate is a relationship right karate club and and then Daniel get connected with me because Karate Club have, have strong closure, uh, tied with Anna, and also uh, Karate have a strong closure to Daniel. That's why they get involved. Uh, so, uh, if we so so the same study with uh, by Cousins and Watts in 2006, you can see that they start considering now now uh, uh, the class schedules for each student and class and focus, right? So. Uh, you can see number of uh, common friends uh, after uh, getting uh, getting uh, more than uh, three common friends. The probability of uh, uh, link formation is getting uh, getting uh, getting lower. So basically, what it means: uh, if you are in the same class environment, but you uh, get uh, uh, more than three co friends in common, but you still didn't connect, then the probability of your connection start dropping drastically. So what situation is described? It describes a situation where of interest, right? So basically when you are uh, already in the same environment, like say in your group, and you have many friends in common, more friends in common you have, uh, and if you didn't get the connection yet, more likely you will not get connection in the future, right? Because your interests are different. So like uh, if, if all of us uh, study already, let's say for six months together, and by then you haven't uh, formed a relationship, and you have many friends in common, so you kind of have many chances to form a relationship. After six days, uh, it's unlikely that you are forming this relationship. Yeah, so um, this is uh, basically the diminishing returns effect. There's also a social influence. So maybe, for example, Anna can, uh, can introduce Bob to Karate. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, described in, uh, in this picture, right? So, Anna has a link with Bob, Anna has a, a link with Karate, and then Anna introduced Bob, Bob to Karate Club. Uh, and then there was uh, also the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the study on the live journal community regarding this membership, right? So there's a probability of joining community when K friends are already members, right? So you can see that uh, K is how many friends are members of community and the probability of joining community. So basically, uh, once you are reaching uh, the, like for example, one friend is a member of community, probability growing not very high, but once two friends of you, or three friends, or four, five, or five friends start getting members of community, it actually grows quite far till it reaching 10, and after that, uh, growth also starts uh, getting uh, diminished. So probabilities increase with K, a number of common members, similarly uh, initial increasing effect to that is triadic closure, right? So you can see that uh, once uh, something gets a little bit more, more viral, then the probabilities of making this connection get increased. Yeah, and this also is editing Wikipedia articles, similar observation. So uh, if you talk about homophily, both selection and social influence drive homophily, but how important is each of these mechanisms? And the important question would be, of course, a different mechanism implies different policies, right? Because uh, once we understand how it works, we will start thinking about what kind of policies we can apply to manage this uh, uh, smartly, and this applies to social policies, to policies in organizations like HP had, and really uh, organization put a lot of focus on how to study the network mechanics, uh, the relationship between people, interests, etc., to really establish a, a meaningful management framework. This is very cool, and by technology, it can be really solved well in case if you can actually uh, see what influence what and how does uh, this is related to overall the forming connections and you can predict the forming of these connections and we also can uh, try to figure out whether there are some political circles inside organizations that are not very healthy um, so difficult question of course uh, you need to have a data over time so you need to continuously track that and it requires observation of almost all characteristics right so if you don't know uh, uh, 
uh, some key for the like like feature feature engineering, right? You need, really need to know which characteristics you really need to observe those people's like hobbies and everything, right? Like micro micro control to really figure out what really uh, impacts the uh, the um, the the connection building. So that's a hot topic. Uh, people uh, study email interactions, experimental data, and social influence. Uh, social influence among students, neuron mimes, uh, dorm assignment, and uh, yeah, it's a, a lot of interesting studies. You can read about that. This uh, pretty much all uh, for today. And um, if you go into the summary of this, you can see that networks are everywhere, and there are several useful networks that can really measure these metrics and model and analyze these metrics. Uh, graphs are quite useful to model social uh, network relationship and simple graph measurements can tell a lot about user relationship, right? So if you have a graph, use this graph features to train your machine learning model because it might discover something very useful for your application. If you have a graph, you know the right properties, you can actually get a lot of metrics from this graph and you can see correlations of each metrics with some events happening in this graph, we can predict what will happen in the future based on this graph. Also, we have this homophilia effect that people tend to be closer to us with a similar interest. And it's probably studied in the literature. So uh, in the next lesson, we will be actually uh, going to uh, the lecture mm -hmm. nine. And because multi-source data fusion was discussed last time. And uh, of course, she will lead one uh, lab one plus two submissions and the tutorials. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good day. And uh, today on this note, we're not just finishing the lecture, but mm -hmm. the tutorial was have been given already. We also uh, accomplished everything we planned for today. Thank you very much and bye.